Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio and um, in a change to the advertised program uh, do we ever actually do what we say we're going to do? I don't know, it just seems to <laughs> seems to be fairly standard this. Um, the plan was to do Sugden versus Riga Athos amplifier um, just circumstances, partly because I'm in the demo room and I'm, I'm using the Sugden at the moment um, just doing a few, testing a few bits and bobs in here so I thought as the Sugden say, let's just do a, let's just do the Sugden review, and we'll do the Athos on its own in later today, because both both amplifiers probably probably deserve a sort of more sort of in, in depth individual review, really. Um, so let's have a look and uh, I'll go through a few features with you, and um, yeah, I'll turn the camera around. Right, yeah, here it is. This is the Sugden A twenty one SE. So this is the biggest of the three models in the, the 21 range. Uh, the bottom two are sort of the same model really. The, the basic 21 is either, you can either buy it as 21L, uh, which is line only, or just the straight 21, which has got a bit an inbuilt phono stage. Uh, they're both in the slimmer case, and they both weigh about 12 kilos, something like that. The, the SE is in a like, taller case, same width and everything, but taller case, and this is something like 15 kilos, so it's it's a good three ki three kilos heavier. Um, most of that, most of that will be the the power supply because it's got a huge. This has got a huge transformer. I think it's like 50 percent bigger than the one in the straightforward 21. Um, what that does, it gives it just a little bit more power. Um, on paper, it doesn't sound like a lot, but actually, um, it, you can really. You know, you really sort of notice it with this. Um, this is rated at 30 watts, whereas the st standard 21s are 23. And obviously this I mean, drops down, I think, into 4 ohms. These are about 40 watts. Um, but at that level, that level of output, you don't have any real issues, well, in re well, real world issues with driving speaker. I mean, there are obviously there's some that it wouldn't drive, but um, most most modern day speakers, that you know, sensibly priced modern day speakers, this will have no problem with. With standard 21s you do have to pick and choose a little bit, you have to get something quite efficient. Um, yeah, otherwise you just find it, it'll just run out of steam a little bit. But this, this is this is actually very capable, drives drive most things and drives them well. Actually, it's got, the main thing about this is it's got a tremendous grip on the speakers, it really does drive things well. And you don't have to turn it, I've said this before in my videos, um, if an amplifier is designed properly it will grip onto speakers and you will get the, the full sort of dynamic, you know, balanced sound even at lower levels that's a sign of a good amp really and you tend to find very high power rated amplifiers seem to need to be running you know running fairly well up the range before they start to get that sort of balanced feeling so um so yeah so yeah as usual class a i should put my hand on here and it's i can tell you for definite it's class a um so it runs very warm um just to I'll just do my little, this little toy that I bought, isn't it? now getting its second use, uh, just to show the sort of temperature it's running at. I've not actually tested this to see how, how far up it, what sort of temperature it's showing at the moment. But, so we're actually showing, move that around a little bit. Yeah, about 53, 54 centigrade, which is about 130, 131 degrees, something like that. So they, they do pretty warm. Um, this is a hot spot. It was. It actually runs slightly cooler. I'm thinking about it. This is actually running slightly cooler than the standard 21 does. I think I was showing something like 65 degrees, wasn't it? Centigrade, 135. Might be wrong. I'll have to, I'll have to look back at my video and see what see what it was. But I think I think the actual 21 runs slightly warmer than that. But then again, there's, there's more heat sink on here, so it's probably dissipating the heat slightly better than the, the smaller one does. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, the reason it's on, like I say, I was going to do um, Athos versus 21SE because they're kind of the same money but completely different to each other. And I thought it'd be quite an interesting comparison, but um, this just happened to be, on, to be on today. And I've not done a video for a while because things have just been a bit manic, to be honest. And, uh, all sorts of crazy things are going on at the moment that are taking a lot of my time. So uh, I haven't had a chance to sort of break off. But as I was doing a test up here, and this is running and up to temperature. I thought, yeah, let's give it a go. Let's do a quick video. The reason it's here actually is I'm, t I'm actually I'm actually testing the little Tom Evans um, Macro Groove Fano stage, which I sold to a chap about three months ago, um, and he says it's faulty. I haven't found anything wrong with it actually. Um, I suspect it might be he's moved something in his room and it's picking noise up from something because it, apparently it's, buzz it's buzzing on one channel. It isn't here, so I don't know. I'm not saying it's not faulty, but I don't think I've ever actually had anything Tom Evans that went faulty. So. 
Um, usually with piano stages, record players, it's usually external noise that causes things. What well, I, I mean, actually, one thing I might do is I might do a video um, just showing how things like phono stages and record players are affected by things in a room because I think most people assume if there's, an, if there's any sort of buzzing noise then the system mustn't be earthed right. And it's really rare that, that it is earth problems. But I'm going off on a tangent. That's uh, <laughs> my catchphrase again. Um, right, yeah, back to the, back to the sub and stop, stop waffling on. Um, yeah, the actual features wise, this is a, it's identical to the, 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 the standard 21s. Um, much to the dismay of one of the reps from, I'll not mention which company, one of the main, main companies I do. Um, the layout of this is different to the 21. It's exactly the same features on the front, but completely reversed. And I had them stacked up downstairs, and he couldn't handle the fact that the, the selector switch was here, the on off switch was over there and the power lights and the remote sensors were, were reversed so it's kind of com completely turned over the other way around and he just he couldn't handle it um, his, his OCD was kicking off um, so but yeah why they've done that I don't know it might, have, it might be something to do with the way the, that the layout is inside that it was better that way but um, yeah I hadn't noticed we, we, I, hadn't, I, I, I do have various forms of OCD going on but that I hadn't noticed that um, so yeah it's very very solidly made, um, lovely solid volume control, you know, it just feels engineered from the solid really. Um, you've got five line inputs, like I say no phono on this, so just five lines so you can plug anything, you know, a phono stage, CD player, tuner, tape, um, Bluetooth receiver, streamer, that sort of thing. So it'll, it's, yeah, it's got five, like I say, five inputs, it'll, it'll, it'll cover most, most things that you'd ever need really. Um, what I will do is I shall turn it round and, and show you the back panel in a moment. Actually, first let's just sound wise, it's quite interesting the sound quality of this. I'd say this is probably one of my favourite amplifiers, um, sort of sub about £4,000 to be honest. Well, actually, probably a bit more than that. Um, I've had a few interesting conversations with people about, about particularly the SE recently. Um, one, one was with another dealer, um, and one was with a customer over the phone a few days ago. And I kind of agree with them actually. Um, both of them said that they preferred the standard 21 to this, and I can see. I sort of understand that. I think. I think the standard 21 is a little bit more involving than this is. But if you compare both of them to other amplifiers at that sort of at this sort of money and more, the amount of involvement you get from either of them is way better. I mean, that's what Sugden are about, really. It's this um, tremendous involvement in the music. You really get really get keyed into the, the, the talent of the musician, and that's all you're listening to. You're not listening to the bass and the treble and how loud it goes and all this sort of thing. You're just completely entranced with the musician. And I must admit, I don't think the SE is quite as good as the Basic 21, but because the SE is that much that much more capable in the real world, I think this is a much better buy. Um, I don't think you'll get you'll ever come unstuck with choice of speakers or anything like that, unless you want to go crazy, in which case they'd probably be looking at an IA4, which is the really big one, which is coming up here somewhere. It's the 50 watt version, which is uh, a fair old jumping price. But um, but yeah, I think this is such a good all round, and I do I appreciate what people say about it not being quite as involving. But I think it's only a, probably only a percentage less good in that respect, but in definition, scale, driving ability, just about every other just about every other thing you can think of for it that you want an amplifier to do, the SE is quite a bit better. It it, it really I mean it's a thousand pounds extra, so it's gotta be better. Um but it, it it really does justify that. It's not um yeah it's there's yeah you you can't you can't sort of argue that it's it's not pulling its way because it really does. So yeah sound quality um and it's the usual class A thing. It's, it's this like entrancing sound, very very fast. Because, like I said, when the last time I did a, a review of the, of the straightforward twenty one, the reason class A is so good is that it works sort of back to front. It um, most amplifiers, class A B amplifiers, will supply the power as it's as as the, the music signal asks for it. They'll say, oh, I need some, I need some signal. Here's some signal and let's drive the speakers sort of thing and it sort of come it'll build up to it whereas class a is the amplifier 
running at, running at, at, at full capacity all the time. And when the music signal comes along, it just draws from that full capacity. It's a bit like, I tried to use the analogy of a car and I didn't quite explain it properly last time, but it's basically like in a manual, I think the Americans would call a stick shift car. If you sit, if you want to pull away from a junction, and normally, normally in a car you would press the accelerator as you, want to, as you want to pull away, pulling the clutch out slowly and balancing it and, you know, you will smoothly pull away. With class A, the equivalent in a car would be you have your foot flat on the on the accelerator with the, the revs going as high as they possibly can and when you want to go you just pull the clutch out straight away and you're off and it's it's as instant as that it's 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 sort of the wheel spin start of the amplifier world um so there's that the power is instantly there all the time it doesn't have to draw it doesn't have to create the power it's there all the time and it just draws from what's already been produced so which is the reason that these run so hot i mean literally it's it is quite difficult to leave your hand on there. Um, but as long as they, 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 they don't have any problems with, you know, actually overheating or anything like that, they just need space around, they've got, they've got a good space around, I tend to put them on top. I mean, it'd probably be fair enough putting it underneath, to be honest, under here, because it's open sides, back, front, be fine under there, but I wouldn't stack anything on top. It's like a lot of things, really, you, you, you probably wouldn't do that. I think, I was, I was just thinking the other day, actually, I think the... Um, the standard 21 and the SEs probably almost appeal to different people. I think the SE almost would appeal to somebody who's had a transistor amplifier before, quite fancy valves, but don't really want to go down that path. Um, and I think I would say that the standard 21 is people coming the other way. People have had valves, got a bit fed up with it, with all the hassle and the you know the because they they can be quirky to be fair and the, the needs of you know the efficient speakers and all this sort of thing i think the standard 21 almost would appeal more to somebody who's had a valve amp and he's coming up the other way and is used to having the, the low power output not concerned by it they've already set the system up around that so 21 20, standard 21 is fine the se is like i say for people coming down the other way um and they've got speakers that need a bit more a bit more going on, really, um, but they want that nice sudden valvey sort of effect, really, because it's they do sound like valve amps. Um, not totally, but they've got that. If you've ever listened to valve, valve has got a big sort of acoustic, big spacious acoustic, and musicians always sound very, very real. Uh, they're not always that good at dynamic. They're not always good at um, big scale, whereas the subdens are, because the class A, you know, gives you that dynamic. So it's it's almost the best of both worlds with the subdens, really. Um, I think with, the problem with valves is this, to get that big dynamic and to get the driving ability, they have to be extreme. They tend to be extremely expensive. Um, I've had some decent valve stuff over the years, and it's it, the cost of the things is, it just starts to get prohibitive, really. Um, so yeah, let's. Um, I was going to turn this around and show you the back panel. I'll um, I'll disconnect it all and show you the back panel. Yeah, so it's a fairly straightforward, straightforward back panel, really. Um, all your inputs are here, so you've got five inputs. Again, just labelled, as is tends to be more the way now, because there's so many things that you can be plugging in here. Uh, input one, input two, to five. Um, I mean, years ago, they would la la label it perhaps CD tape tuner, because that's what everybody had, whereas now we've got you know, streamers, TVs going through. I've got my TV through my amplifier. Um, all sorts of things you can connect in there, really. So there's no but labeling these as a bit of a you know you're never going to get the right things on there. So they just yeah tend to just one two three four five because they're all the same thing. They're all, they're all line level. Um, so you've got a tape uh, output and a preamp output. So your preamp output is if you want to just run with a say a power amp with it. Tape output you can run. Well, they tend to use that with like headphone amps now, or, or a tape deck, in fact. So you could, that's your record out. So that's a full line level output from the preamp. So on like headphone amplifiers, the headphone amplifier's got its own volume, so it would take its full line level, and then you've got your volume. Preamp, the preamp one is variable from the preamp itself, from the actual volume control on here, so that, that varies. So that's why that will go into a power amp. Um, that's that really. You've got, yeah, we've got quite substantial looking... Um, four mil and binding post type socket switcher. So you can put four mil in the end, or you can spade into there, or you can push your cable, bare wire into TNT, which I wouldn't advise, but you can do that. And standard IEC 
uh, main socket, so like a kettle lead uh, plug on the back. So that's it really, fairly, like I say, fairly straightforward. Um, I was trying to think what, what else we need to say about that. I thought they had a socket for the... Um, oh yeah, this, yeah separate, there is a separate phono stage you can buy for these, which I've, I haven't got one of those. I need to probably get one in get one in for stock, but um, yeah, they do do a sort of A21 phono stage, which is um, it's pretty good actually, pretty good little phono stage. I'm often, I tend to go off, I tend to, with phono stages, I tend to um, go with ones that are designed by people who just make phono stages because they tend, it's a bit of a black art. It is a, it, it's it's not something that every amplifier manufacturer has sort of got, got the head around. I think Riga have. Um, Name Audio used to be pretty good on phono stages. Um, never thought Lynn quite cracked it. Um, but yeah, things like the Tom Evans tend to be, um, you know, say companies that tend to just make phono stages. I mean, not, I mean, Tom makes everything really, but uh, you know, pre's and powers. But um, his his main thing is is phono stages, really. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the rear panel. We just uh, turn back around again. Yeah, back to the front panel. Um, I need to say, yeah, uh, finish wise, this is the silver, or well, I think they call it titanium. There's also a sort of a graphite colour, which is sort of um, quite just a dark grey, really. But it's, um, I think with the dark greys, they keep these are kept in the silver, so you get it's quite a nice contrasty front panel. The, the, uh, the graphite on. Um, they also do colours as well, which I think if you've seen the video on my twenty one. Um, Standard, then um, we spec'd ours in orange because the early Sugdens, yeah, 1970s Sugdens, like old, old A48s and things like that, were um, were all orange. So we've sort of, you know, uh, done that as a as a sort of nod to the old old Sugdens from the 60s, really. Um, pretty much any colour you want, I think, with the, with the front panels. I've seen them in blues and reds, greens. Um, some colours work better than others. I think the, I think our orange works very well. Uh, we've had we've sold a few orange off it actually. With quite a few people have, have taken the plunge and, and paid the extra and gone for orange. So uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, what else do we need to know? Yeah, um, blue LED. I'm not sure about blue LEDs. I think at least this isn't crazily bright like some. It's it's, it's sort of medium medium to. Medium to bright LED, not like I say, so some of them are almost flare if they're so bright with the, 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 the um, blue LEDs. Uh, there is a remote, I haven't got the remote out of the box for this actually, but um, just your sort of generic remote really. I think a lot of specialist manufacturers don't spend a lot of money on the remotes really. I think the, the cost of actually getting one bespoke made isn't, worth, isn't justifiable with sort of low volume manufacturers really. I did, I did have a guy on in the comments, is who seems to have commented on every commented on every amplifier product I've done so far, saying we're not in the 1990s. Sort the remote out. Um, I, th I don't know. I have a feeling. I think it almost seems to be with with audio kit. the the better The better the kit is, the worse the remote is. I think it's because it's not a priority. I think that's what it is. I think. Um, most decent kit. I think you'd stick it. You tend to set it up, set it up, set the volume, and listen to a whole album. You don't tend to flick around so much with it. So much, and I don't. I just don't think it's that much of a priority for a user. And I don't think it, that's it's that much of a priority for the manufacturers because of the cost involved when they can be spending more money on the internals. So I don't know the remote things. But I, I, I'm probably speaking from the wrong wrong direction on this because I don't tend to. I don't really use remote. In fact, no, I don't use remotes. I think I can probably say that. You do on the TV because the TV is a different thing, but with Hi-Fi I've never found it I've never never found it to be something I've, I've ever needed really. Um, but yeah, I'll probably get comments about that, but yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, so that's the Sugden 21 SE. Uh, I will do the Athos and I'll do it on its own. Um, quite a lot to say about the Athos really. I think that's um, quite an interesting amp as well. Um, I haven't actually got an IA4 Sugden, which I will be getting one uh, when things have, at the moment there's huge, huge waiting list for Sugden. And as soon as that's all died down, my intention is to buy an, buy an IA4. I did have the anniversary, the uh, ANV50, uh, which was their 50th anniversary model. I hate to say, I didn't get on with it very well. I heard it initially and really liked it, but then the more I listened to it, I just felt as though there was something kind of missing. Uh, it had tremendous drive. It was, when I had it, 
um, when I had a demonstrator, it was around the same time that I had some Magnaplaner speakers here. We had uh, 2.5s, 2.7s, I think they were, which were notoriously difficult to drive. And the AMV50 was the only one of the only amplifiers I had in here, sort of sensibly priced amplifiers that would drive them. So I thought this is great because it's panel speakers really. If you're thinking panel speakers, you, you think Sugden in the same same thought because they've got that same big open sound stage and that sort of feel. So you'd really want to put the two together. But things like the, even the SE wouldn't drive Magnaplane. It's 21, forget it. Um, but the AMV50 did, and it sounded fantastic up to a point. But it just to me never quite sounded enough enough like a Sugden. It sounded a little bit too ordinary somehow. So I ended up selling it off but um, I don't know I might revisit that one but um, the IA4 sounds like a much bigger 21 um, and it is a much bigger 21 because it's like I say it's probably almost twice the height a uh, tremendously large imposing amplifier and I will get one it, it might end up going home with me but um, that's so, that's always a danger in this job really but uh, anyway yeah I hope you um, let's turn around again I uh, hope you like that one um, so things are a little bit crazy here at the moment, so I'm, uh, I'm trying to do a video when I can. But um, yeah, it's not it's not easy to find find time between things to uh, to actually sit down and, and get stuff together. So yeah, I hope you liked it. If if you want to subscribe, that would be really really brilliant if you can do that and put give us a like. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.